Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over some sample problems from the new Life Science Biology Regents exam. For those of you that don't know, this is going to be the exam that's replacing the Living Environment Regents exam this June. So if you're scheduled to take a biology exam on June 10th, 2025, most likely you're going to be taking this new exam. And this video is about reviewing those problems that you're going to encounter on this new exam. If you have any questions as to the format of this exam, or if you want even more practice, I've uploaded videos that go over formatting and videos that go over a bunch of other sample problems and sample clusters. If you want information on them, please check them out in the description of this video. I greatly, greatly recommend it as a, as it's a good study aid. That being said, we're going to go ahead and look at the dinosaur evolution sample cluster of problems. It starts up here. It's five questions. It starts up here with this blurb, which says that avian or bird-like and non-avian or not bird-like dinosaurs lived in the northern hemisphere in extreme heat. The average summer temperature could range from 81 degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Winters were mild and wet, averaging around 59 degrees Fahrenheit, and there was no polar ice at the time. Most non-bird-like or non-avian dinosaurs had a mass of about 7,700 pounds. Most avian dinosaurs weighed significantly less, and most mammals that coexisted with the dinosaurs weighed less than a pound. Okay, so this is our opening paragraph. Here we have a photo that describes that, right? So we have three main classes of life forms. We have non-avian or bird or non-bird-like dinosaurs, dinosaurs that don't behave or look like birds. These have a high mass, a high size. Then we have avian or bird-like dinosaurs, dinosaurs that have wings, dinosaurs that look like birds, dinosaurs that behave like birds. They, again, were much smaller and weighed much less than the non-avian dinosaurs. And finally, we have early mammals, which were extremely, extremely small. And all three of these animals coexisted, or three of these classes of animals coexisted among one another. Then it says that a giant asteroid struck just off the coast of Mexico 66 million years ago. The asteroid impact is referenced to as the KT extinction. Enormous amounts of dust, sulfur, and carbon dioxide entered the atmosphere. It caused Earth's average surface temperature to drop by as much as 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Dust from the impact blocked the sun's radiation for an extended amount of time, and photosynthesis was drastically reduced. Many dinosaurs were immediately killed, while others managed to survive for a period of time. All of the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. The mammals that survived the impact increased the number, and they continued to survive and evolve. So essentially, we had this perfect little space right here. We had three main classes of dinosaurs, and all of a sudden, guess what? Big asteroid hit the planet. Now, as it hit the planet, not only did it kill some animals on impact, but it also let a lot of dust into the atmosphere. So if this is our Earth, this green and blue ball right here. All of a sudden, this asteroid impacted our surface of our Earth, and place this large black cloud of dust in the atmosphere. And this cloud was so dark and so thick that the sun's rays could no longer hit the earth, right? Some of them could pass, but not a lot of them. So now that we had less sunlight, photosynthesis happened at a slower rate because photosynthesis needed sunlight, right? And in addition to that, because less rays of sun were hitting the earth, the earth got a lot colder because we get our heat and our temperature from these rays, right? So this is essentially this entire section summed up uh, in a couple sentences. So number one asks us for a possible explanation for why some organisms survived and that some organisms didn't. So how come the mammals were able to survive the extinction, but the non-avian dinosaurs weren't? Well, let's look at choice one. It says that the reason why some were able to survive and others weren't able to survive was that herbivores had a large variety of plants to eat. Hold on, this is false. Why is this false? Because the impact of this asteroid resulted in photosynthesis being drastically reduced. If there's less photosynthesis going on, guess what? There's less plants. Plants need sunlight. You get rid of the sunlight, you get rid of plants. So herbivores would have had a smaller variety of plants to eat, not more. Number two says that some evolved over better than others because they were able to evolve quickly into better adapted non-avian species. Well, this is tempted tempting answer choice because it's saying that, well, the species that survived just were able to evolve quicker. But look what happened. It says that they adapted into better non-avian species. If we look back at our reading, look what it says. It says that many dinosaurs were killed immediately while others managed to survive, but all of the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. So clearly, if you evolved into a better non-avian species, that doesn't make any sense because all of the non-avian species were killed off. Number three says that some species were able to better compete successfully after the asteroid impact. And this seems like the correct answer here, right? The asteroid impact, demolished almost all of the plant life on Earth and a lot of other organisms on Earth. The organisms that were left surviving from this impact, if you were better able to compete for food, for space, for air, for a habitat, guess what? 
you are able to survive better because you were given an advantage. Number four said that some were faster and stronger than others and were able to outrun the blast of the impact. Again, it's not the fact that, oh, this asteroid, you know, set a big fire on one part of the planet. The issue with this asteroid impact was that it sent dust in the atmosphere that blocked out all of the sun. The actual impact itself wasn't as, imp uh, was, oh, well, I was going to say it wasn't as impactful, but it wasn't as severe as the dust that it, that are released into the atmosphere. So even if you were able to outrun the blast, guess what? The lack of sunlight would mean that there's less temperature. And if you were a non-avian dinosaur, you would have frozen to death. Because again, the temperature dropped by 47 degrees Fahrenheit. So even if you were able to run faster, the temperature would have killed you. And the lack of food also would have killed you, which is why choice three is the correct answer here, right? If you're able to compete more successfully, you're able to survive more readily. Number two asks us to explain how the evidence provided supports the claim that non-avian dinosaurs went extinct after the impact because of traits present in their populations. So again, the key word here is how the evidence provided supports the claim. The evidence provided is the text here. So your answer has to come from something that they said in the text. Now, the beauty with this type of question is that there's multiple correct answers. And I could think of at least three. Think about it this way, right? What's the difference between the non-avian dinosaurs and the early mammals? The size, right? The non-avian dinosaurs weighed about 7,700 pounds. That means that they have a lot of energy that they require, right? You need a lot of energy if you want to maintain that 7,700 pound body of yours, right? Meaning that they're probably eating a lot. So when the asteroid hit and all of a sudden the photosynthesis or the rate of photosynthesis across the entire planet was reduced, those big dinosaurs no longer had enough food to survive and they probably starved because they were so large. The mammals, on the other hand, with their very small body weight, which was less than a pound, were probably able to still survive because they required a lot less energy and a lot less food than the non-avian dinosaurs. So a correct answer here was you, you, you could have said that since the sun was blocked by dust after the impact, um, <clears throat> less food was available to the large non-avian dinosaurs who later starved and went extinct. So here's my evidence from the passage. I know that the sun blocked it, and I know that large non-avian dinosaurs required a lot of food. So since the sun was blocked by the dust after the impact of the meteor, less food was available to the large non-avian dinosaurs who later starved and went extinct. Okay, so that's a perfectly good answer here because we draw on evidence from that text. Okay, another answer here, but you could have said that most non-avian dinosaurs were very large, so they had a high energy requirement. The asteroid impact reduced the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth. As a result, photosynthesis declined and the food web collapsed, right? And again, a collapsing food web means that you don't have enough energy left to support you or your population or your species, right? And finally, a thing that I didn't cover but is for sure true is that these non-avian dinosaurs thrived in warm environments, ranging from 81 degrees to 104 degrees. So you could say that the asteroid impact caused temperatures to drop to 47 degrees Fahrenheit, which the large non-avian dinosaurs were not able to adapt or not adapted to such cold environments. So because they weren't able to adapt or weren't adapted to cold environments, they all starved. They not only did they starve to death, but they also froze to death. So you could have said that the non-avian dinosaur trait had traits that were adapted to a warm environment and the impact of the asteroid reduced the temperature of the earth to 47 degrees Fahrenheit, causing many to live, <clears throat> causing many not to live, but to freeze to death or to live in an environment that they weren't properly adapted for and eventually go extinct. So again, many correct answers for this problem. Then we continue reading. It says that when scientists analyzed leaf fossils formed after the asteroid impact, they discovered that the number and types of plants changed over time. They grouped the fossils found in New Mexico and Colorado rock layers into phases of changing diversity. During this time, the environment was gradually warming. So we can see here how this was phase one, right? These are the fossils in the soil before the KT extinction event. So before the asteroid came, we had very, very high number of species. We had high biodiversity, right? Many different types of leaves. Then what happened was the KT event happened. And look what happened. Oh, I said happened a bunch, but sorry, guys. But look, phase two, we only had two species of plants, right? We just had plants that looked like this. So there was a 
large, massive decrease in biodiversity at this time. Then, over time, the biodiversity slowly increased. You can see here, as we move past this extinction event, which I'm going to mark off with this, with this solid black line, the spe number of species is going to increase. So the biodiversity is slowly going to come back to life. Right? And number three asks, which statement provides evidence that could be used to support the claim that the evolution of plants is the result of changes that occurred in the environment? Well, if we look through our answer choices, we see that choice three is probably the strongest bet. Why? Because it says the diversity of plant species increased during the 1.5 million years after the KT extinction that changed environmental conditions on Earth. If we see here, the plants before this extinction event were very diverse. We see that the plants after the extinction event are also diverse but they are different, right? They're more uniform in shape, right? They have this more, they're uh, shaped more like a sp uh, spear than, you know, this, which is really wavy and bendy. And they're also very large. They have a large surface area co compared to these leaves, which are very tiny. So we can see here how the KT event led to a large, large environmental change. And that from that environmental change came a new number of species, that were all different from the number of species and the type of species that were present beforehand, right? Choice one is wrong because it's saying that the diversity of plants in phase one remained constant. That's false, right? Look what happened after phase one. There was only one species of plant that survived. So the diversity was not constant, it decreased. Number two says the number of plant species decreased during the 1.5 million years before the KT extinction. Well, there were definitely more species before the KT extinction. So the number of species should have increased before the extinction, right? So that's false. And four says the number of plant species remained stable from phase three to phase five. That's false. At phase three, we had eight species. Phase five, we had 35. The number of species clearly increased by a lot, right? Number two, or table two, shows you mammal evolution. So we have different types of mammals. We have, you know, whenever they appeared after the extinction event, we have their mass, what they ate. So Mammal L is the oldest one because it only, it only appeared 30, 300,000 years after the extinction event. It ate only small in insects. It was the size of a raccoon and had a very low body mass. And we can see here how over time, these mammals are going to change into O slowly, which is, again, much uh, many, many years after the extinction event and after species L. Its body mass is going to increase its feeding niche is going to change, and its size is going to change. So number four asks, which statement provides evidence that changes in an environment may cause changes in a mammal species? So which one of these rows is going to show us that as the environment changes following an extinction event, the species present are also going to change? So choice one says that mammals got larger in body size as plant diversity decreased. Well, let's compare this with this diagram right here. We see here how after the KT, uh, KT extinction event, the plant diversity increased. We, had a new, we have an increase in the number of species. So automatically choice one is wrong. Why? Because plant, bi plant diversity increased over time, not decreased, right? Plant diversity increased following the extinction. It didn't go down, it went up, so that's false. Number two says, as the type of plant changed, the tooth and jaw structure of the mammals also changed. And this is gonna be true. Right? This is what's, what's actually uh, supported by this table. We see here how the feeding niche, you know, at mammal L only ate small insect and had sharp teeth. M was a herbivore with canine teeth. <clears throat> N was an omnivore with canine teeth and massive jaws. Herbivores and O were herbivores with two to three rows of molar teeth. So the only reliable thing that we see here is a change in the type of jaw and the type of teeth that those species had, right? The body mass doesn't really sure it changes but there's no pattern here right we can say that it increases but we really can't because it increased from l to m but not from n m to n and not from n to o so the only real trend that we have here is that the jaw and the teeth type of these animals keeps changing over time and that should make sense because look at the plants that they're eating they're changing right uh you know species that lived in in phase four probably had to get a bigger jaw or more stronger teeth to grind down these much larger leaves whereas species living in phase two didn't really have that many uh plants to feed on so they didn't really need to feed on plants instead they fed on insects and had smaller teeth right because insects are a lot smaller than plants and leaves uh, number three is wrong because where the animals live changed as the number of plant species increased. This does not show me where the animals live, so I can't make an assumption off that. And four, the mammals listed in the chart were adapted to feeding on the shape of, on the same species of plants. That's also false because if we look at 
at this graph right here, we see how there are many different types and many different species of plants. And the reason why their, their jaw and their teeth sizes are changing is to better eat these plants and better eat whatever is around them in their environment. If they were all eating the same species of plant, well, they, none of them would need special jaws, special teeth to eat those plants. And as a result, there would be no change in this entire column if they were all eating the same thing. Right? Think about it, right? If you want to eat spaghetti, you're going to get a fork. If you want to eat a steak, you're going to get a fork and a knife. So if you change the food that you eat, you're going to change the tools that you use to eat them. In this case, those tools are your jaw and your teeth. Number five, ask us to evaluate all the information given and to complete a table by providing the evidence that supports the claim that changes in the environment in environmental conditions may result in blank. Okay, so this may be new to all of you, but again, all you have to do here is to just write one thing in each one of these boxes. Okay, and you're you're essentially given an, giving an example for how a change in environmental conditions resulted in an increased number of individuals of some species, the new emergence of some species, or the extinction of other species. All right. So guess what? The easiest one here is the extinction of other species. The change in environmental conditions that we're talking about is, well, obviously the change in, the, in how the Earth looked and how the Earth felt after the asteroid came. What happened after the asteroid came? The dinosaurs went extinct. So we can say that the change in environmental conditions resulted in the extinction of another species. Where's our proof? Well, all the way up here when it says that it, that it led to the extinction of all non-avian dinosaurs. So we can just say that here that all non-avian dinosaurs were killed during a meteor impact. Or we can say that all non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. Probably be a better answer here, but that one also works. Went extinct after, during a meteor impact. The meteor impact was the change in the environment, and the result was that a species went extinct. Okay, so let's look at another one here. What's an example that the change in environmental condition increased the number of individuals of some species? Well, think about it. What happened? Well, after going back to this paragraph right here, we see that animals that survived the asteroid impact ended up increasing in number. So we can just use that as proof here, right? After the asteroid, the mammals that survive, managed to survive the blast increased the number. So mammals surviving the asteroid blast increased population size, right? So that shows how an environmental change can actually increase the amount of species present but also how it can lead to the extinction of another species. So finally, we need to, to support the claim that a change in environmental condition may uh, result in the emergence of a brand new species. So if we look over here on this table, we can see here how after the KT extinction, we had an increase in the number of species of plants. So you can say how new species of plants emerged following the KT impact event, right? And that's going to, and that's pretty much going to tell the regions, oh, well, this guy knows how to read that data table. And he knows that well, following the extinction, new species of plants emerge, right? So this is more than enough information that you need to get full credit here. All you have to do is just scan the text and well, provide evidence to whatever they say here. All right, and obviously there's gonna be many, many different answers that you can <clears throat> that you could put here that'll get you full credit on this section or on this problem itself. All right. So that's the end of this video. That's all five questions from this sample cluster reviewed. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Again, if this new format of the exam confuses you, I highly recommend that you check out my video that goes over the format of this exam. It's in the description of this video. Um, again, if you want to if you want me to make more of these videos, please let me know in the comments below as well. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you have a nice night.